Refutation of Obfuscation Part 1 The truth most Christians do not know about Christianity, the Holy Bible, and Islam. Introduction All the praise is for Allah who is the creator of all existence and the most generous to his creation, while he is also the all-compelling. He is the only one having the right to be worshipped without associating partners with him, no sons, no daughters. No one he must consult and nothing is like unto him or has any comparison with him. He is the king of all who claim sovereignty. The only one who has the right to legislate for his creatures. He is the giver of life and the giver of death, while death has no effect upon him, because he is the ever-living the self-subsisting. He is the eternal and the only absolute. All the praise is for Allah who has power over all things and there is no power, strength, nor influence to cause benefit or detriment except through him. Indeed, he is the one who created this complex world, the evident and the speculative, the seen and the unseen, the heavens, the earth, and all that is in between. It is he who sent his messengers and prophets, peace be upon them all, with a common message of strict monotheism, believing with obedience in the oneness of the Almighty Creator without partners or associates with him. Refutation of Obfuscation Dear whoever is reading this book, Allah the Most Merciful says, Say, O Messenger, O Jews and Christians, people of the Scripture, come let us unite on a fair word in which we are all equal. That we worship Allah alone and we do not worship anyone besides Him, no matter what His rank and no matter how high is His status. And that we do not take one another as lords to be worshipped and followed besides Allah. If they turn away from the truth and fairness that you call them towards, then, O believers, say to them, bear witness that we have surrendered to Allah and are obedient to Him. The Glorious Quran 3 hours 64 minutes People of the Scripture is a respectful title given to the Jews and Christians in the Glorious Quran, and the Muslims here are commanded to invite those people who claim to be the recipients of divine revelation of a holy scripture, to gather together onto a common word that we worship none but God Almighty. This is why we have written this book. As a logical human, have you ever stopped and asked yourself one day serious questions, such as why you believe in what you believe in? Have you ever thought about the reason for which you chose the religion you practice? Have you ever thought that why Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is the only way for eternal salvation? Does salvation require the crucifixion of the godly prophet? Does God need to sacrifice himself, or his son, to redeem others? Do you really believe in Trinity, that God is not one, but three in one? Such as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? How sensible is that three entities equal one entity simultaneously? According to what church's point of view? What is the proof to that? Do you know that Trinity verse has been thrown out from the Bible as fabrication, manipulation, deception, interpolation, and tampering? Is the Bible really the Word of God? Is all of it the Word of God? Do you know that the Bible did not remain the same over the time without any change like addition or omission? Which apostle of Jesus, peace be upon him, should his book and life be followed and why? Did you really ask yourself these serious questions? What is the fate of the one who opposes and why? What is the position of the Christian who follow other church teachings? Have you ever asked what are the principles through which you can decide which beliefs right and worthy to follow? What are the measures? How to agree regarding them? Is the emotional feeling the right way to measure faith and the true path? Are you so sure of your faith that it is the true religion and all other religions are false? Thus, are you ready to bet with your immortal spirit on this assumption? Yet, did you stop to think that there are 24 plus official religions and hundreds of beliefs practiced on this planet? Do you know that Christianity includes thousands of sects? All of them claim to understand the ultimate truth better than the rest. Do you know that everyone who practices other beliefs is thinking that he is pious and honest just like you? They live in the delusions of feeling the existence of God and his miracles and faint voice. And they would defend their beliefs based on that so-called, living miracles in the name of Jesus. Undoubtedly, there is a truth out there which all rational people are looking for. 
the truth is obvious, but some people find it hard to figure it out. Therefore, in this book we are going to refute the suspicions and present the truth which is the true message of Almighty God given to mankind. It will be straight to the point not excessive nor too short, and there is no beating around the bush. We would like to say that these pages are now addressed to those sincerely humble souls, who are genuinely interested in seeking the truth and who wish to be guided by the light of God Almighty. As for the other, with a sickness in their souls, the facts presented herein would only increase the disease of their hearts. Thus, do not let ego, pride, bias or prejudice affect your judgment as you read the pages. If you do not free your mind and heart from these obstructions, then it will be near to impossible to see the light of truth to which we will be referring so often. Chapter 1 Is the Bible God's Word? Misery and great suffering awaits those who write the scripture with their own hands, and then say, falsely, that it comes from Allah, exchanging the truth and guidance for a small gain in this world. Such as money or leadership. They will experience misery and suffering because of what their hands have written, through which they told lies about Allah, and for whatever wealth or leadership they may gain through these lies. The Glorious Quran 2 hours 79 minutes Is the Bible God's word? Generally, the word Bible comes from the Greek word, bisia or biblos which means, and the word. What is regarded as canonical text differs depending on traditions and denominations, a number of Bible canons have evolved, with overlapping and diverging contents. There are three major different versions, in the Christian Bible. They differ, in books, verses, contexts, between the Catholic, Orthodox, and Protestant churches. The Eastern Orthodox Bible usually contains 78 total books, the Catholic Bible includes 73 different books while the Protestant Bible traditionally has 66 books in total. To confuse the matter even more, you will find under one denomination different sects having different books as well. For example, Russian Orthodox churches and Ethiopian Orthodox churches are not the same at all. The canon of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo church is wider than the canons used by most other Christian churches. There are 81 books in the Ethiopian Orthodox Bible. On other side, there are churches which reject some of the books that Orthodox, Roman Catholics, and Protestants accept. For instance, Jehovah's Witnesses have their own Bible called. Jehovah Witnesses is a millenarian restorationist Christian denomination with non-Trinitarian beliefs distinct from mainstream Christianity. Noticeably, each claims to possess the true word of God and debunk others' Bible as being manipulated, corrupted, and forged. This has been an ongoing controversy over years and decades. As for the New Testament, it is the name given to the second portion of the Christian Bible, as Jesus, peace be upon him, is its central figure. Basically, it is a collection of 27 books of four different genres of Christian literature, Gospels, Acts of the Apostles, Epistles and an Apocalypse known as. The New Testament books are ordered differently in the Catholic Orthodox Protestant tradition, the Slavonic tradition, the Syriac tradition and the Ethiopian tradition. These books are collections of Christian texts that are the result of refinement by unknown men who thought that they were inspired by God to discern his teachings. However, even the four Gospels of the New Testament were not written by eyewitnesses or people who knew eyewitnesses. None of the Gospels claims to be written by the person it bears his name. Its original manuscripts were lost and there is no access except to ancient manuscripts. Jesus, peace be upon him, and his disciples spoke Aramaic. While those manuscripts were written in different language, Greek, different country, and after tens of decades, nobody knows where it was written or who wrote them. Anonymously, there are thousands of copies and there are no identical copies. This is why evangelists usually say. Muslims believe the glorious Quran, the last testament, to be undoubtedly a verbal dictation from God Almighty through the archangel Jibril, Gabriel, who conveyed the revelation to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the Prophet of God uttered exactly the same words he heard, then it was written and protected. In contrast, Christians believe that the Bible is a non-verbal dictation from God as a whole, rather, it is an inspiration into the hearts. And they claim that, God did not have to talk through the ears, but he, God, could talk directly into the hearts of people.
However, there is no hesitation in acknowledging that the Bible is not the Word of God as a whole. Christian scholars conceded and could not deny the fact that there are four different kinds of witnessing recognizable without any need of specialized training. The reader of the Bible will be able to recognize 1. Word of God 2. Word of the Prophets of God 3. Word of Anonymous Historians 4. Unfortunately, Pornography The following quotations will provide crystal clear proof. The first type, Word of God. A dash, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him, Deuteronomy 18 verse 18. B dash, I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no. Saviour, Isaiah 43 verse 11. C dash. For Lamb God and there is none else, Isaiah 45 verse 22, without any difficulty, the reader will agree that the statements seem to have the sound of being the Word of God. The second type, Word of Prophets of God A dash, and Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord, Mark 12 verse 29, B dash, and Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God, Mark 10 verse 18. See Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Matthew 7 verse 21. Note. The word Father here means, God. However, more details will be explained in the next chapter. The third type, Word of Historians Old Testament. In the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy, which credited to Moses peace be upon him. There are hundreds of statements that proven not to be neither the word of God nor even the word of Moses. For example, could Moses, peace be upon him, write his own obituary, notice of his death? Take a look. So Moses the servant of Lord died. And he, God Almighty, buried him. He, Moses, was 120 years old when he died. And the people of Israel wept for Moses and there has not arisen a prophet. Since in Israel like Moses. Deuteronomy 34 verses 5 to 10, however, the rest books in the Old Testaments are unfortunately worse and contain full of errors, yet, some would blindly claim it is divine. In addition to that, plagiarism, literary theft, has taken a place in the Old Testament. Word for word 100% in, Isaiah, chapter 37 colon 1-38, and copied in, 2 Kings, chapter 19. They are identical and the time difference between them centuries apart. However, renowned Bible scholars admitted that the author of the book of Kings is unknown. New Testament How amazing Gospels so-called New Testament begin with the introduction according to St. Matthew, according to St. Mark, according to St. Luke, according to St. John. Why it is according to? Simply, because none of the four signed his name, the thousands copies of the Bible extant carries neither its author autograph nor his biography, anonymous. Hence, the supposition, according to, is there. To clarify that, when my brother and I wrote this book, we did not say according to Osama Albisha and according to Anas Albisha, we rather used the preposition, by. If, according to, is there, that means someone else wrote this book, not us. The clear evidence is there without any need of hunting, and internal evidence proves that. For example, Matthew was not the author of the first gospel that has his name on it, however, it was anonymous handiwork. Take a look. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax office, and he, Jesus, said to him, Matthew, follow me. And he, Matthew, rose and followed him, Jesus, Matthew 9 verse 9. If this verse was written by Matthew himself then it would be, as Jesus passed on from there, he saw me sitting at the tax office, and he said to me, follow me. And I rose and followed him. Therefore, we can tell that a third person, anonymous historian, has written that so-called gospels on behalf of the rest. Another example. This is the disciple who is bearing witness to these things and who has written these things, and we know that his testimony is true. 
but there are also many other things which Jesus did, were every one of them to be written. I suppose that the world itself could contain the books that would be written. John 21 verses 24 to 25. The reader does not have to be theologian to recognize that anonymous historian had written it. It is so obvious for everyone that such statements are not word of God, word of Jesus, or the disciples of Jesus. In addition to that, plagiarism, literary theft, has taken a place in the New Testament. Matthew and Luke, or whoever they were, had plagiarized no less than 80% of Mark's word. Christian scholars of the highest eminence have admitted it. Yet, Christians nowadays call this wholesale plagiarism the word of God. The fourth type, pornography. Note that we are not proud of exposing such statements which has been written in the Bible as the word of God. However, it is not what we like or dislike, but indeed it is what we are forced to use against the book so called the Bible, which made by anonymous hands. Exalted is the Almighty God over what they ascribe to him as his words. A daughter seduced their father. Now Lot went up out of Zoar and dwelt in the hills with his two daughters. And the firstborn, daughter, said to the younger, Daughter, our father is old. And there is not a man on earth to come into us after the manner of all the earth. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, that we may preserve offspring through our father. Genesis 19 verses 30-36 is this the word of God? The Nobel Peel prophet, Lot, of Almighty God who spent his life calling people to morality, the prophet who was trying to reform the mindset of people of Sodom from committing homosexuality. They accused him with his chaste family of committing incest. B. David committed adultery with a beautiful woman. It happened, late one afternoon, when David saw from the roof a woman bathing. So David sent messengers, and took her, and she came to him and he lay with her. Then she returned to her house. And the woman conceived, and she sent and told David, I am with child, 2 Samuel 11 verses 2 to 5. Is this the word of God? Talking about his pure prophet committing adultery. See Reuben, the son of prophet Jacob, committing adultery with his father's wife. While Israel dwelt in that land Reuben went and lie with Billah his father's concubine, and Israel heard of it. Now the sons of Jacob were twelve inch, Genesis, 35-22. Billah is stated as Jacob's wife not only concubine in Joseph's story, Genesis 37 verse 2. This is a clear incest and grave sin. Is this the word of God? D. Judah, the son of prophet Jacob, committing adultery with his daughter-in-law Tamar. He, Judah, went over to her, Tamar, at the roadside, and said, Come, let me come into you, for he did not know that she was his daughter-in-law. She said, What will you give me, that you may come into me? And, Judah, went into her and she, Tamar, conceived by him, Genesis 38 verses 16 to 18. Is this the word of God? Yet, the filthy story of the incestuous revenge did not stop there, it continues to, Genesis 38, that Tamar had a duel, twins, in her womb, and was blessed. Either whoredoms of the two sisters Ahola and Oholibar. Ezekiel chapter 23. Such a story of lewdness, we cannot have it in this book. If you have the chance read it yourself then you will come to know that such filthiness cannot be in the book of God, yet, sick people claim it is his words. F the Lord with Sarah the wife of Abraham. God forbid, the Lord visited Sarah, as he has promised. And Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age. Genesis 21 verses 1 to 3. These perverted people who have diseases in their hearts shamelessly lied against God and his beloved prophet Abraham. Their extravagant sickness made them to come up with a story between the Almighty God and the chaste wife of Abraham, peace be upon them. Yet, they call this book the Word of God. What a blasphemy! Not too long from what has been falsely ascribed to Almighty God and the lies against him, the response came in the glorious Quran, Allah says. Misery and great suffering awaits those who write the scripture with their own hands, and then say, falsely, that it comes from Allah, exchanging the truth and guidance for a small gain in this world. Such as money or leadership. They will experience misery and suffering because of what their hands have written, through which they told lies about Allah, and for whatever wealth or leadership they may gain through these lies. The Glorious Quran 2 hours 79 minutes On the day of resurrection, you will see those who told lies about Allah, by attributing a partner and son to him, 
their faces blackened, as a sign of their wretchedness. Is there not a place in hell for those who are too proud to have faith in Allah and his messengers? Indeed, there is a place for them in it. The Glorious Quran 39 60 No one is a greater wrongdoer than someone who makes up a lie about Allah, associating a partner or a son with him. Those who make up lies about Allah will be brought before their Lord on the Day of Judgment to be asked about their actions, and the witnesses against them, from among the angels and the messengers. Will say that they were the ones who lied about Allah by attributing a partner or son to him. Allah's depriving them of his mercy is due to their lies about Allah. The Glorious Quran 1118